Greetings, Ramaval Family Church. Great to connect with you today. Thank you for joining in on our online service as we worship God and give Him praise and thank Him for His grace and His mercy on our lives. Let's have a time of prayer and then we'll enter into a place of thanking God and worshiping Him for all His goodness. Father, we just thank You today for your grace and your mercy upon our lives today. We thank you as we come, Father, just to feed on the word today, that your word will come alive in our hearts, that your word will speak to our hearts today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're the one that teaches, guides us, and leads us in the word of God. Jesus, we want to lift up your name above every other name. And we want to glorify you and exalt you and declare that you are our God. And we praise and we worship you, Father, today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let us enter into a moment where we can just worship God. You know, the Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. So right now, as we join in singing, you'll see the words, as usual, will come up on the screen. And so let's enter into a time of praising and glorifying God. You've overcome this world with love and made my fight your own I lift my eyes and throw fear aside and sing out into the night cause even when the world caves even when the fire calls even when the wars awakes I take heart I know you are great Sing your praise With all that I have With all that I am love I stand down the ways Cause you on the tide I stand my soul And know You wait for me I want as well With faith
singing the night my hope for life in you I'll walk through the fire and not be burned Pray in the fire, watch it turn Jesus, tonight I give it all to you Come on, just you sing Hallelujah. Thank God for His anointing. Thank God for His presence. Today, we're going to come and we're going to honor God with our giving today. You know, when you give to God, you honor Him. And you know, it tells us in the Bible in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10, as I read this verse to you today, it tells us this, that we need to bring all our tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now therewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to contain. Hallelujah. God brings that promise to us today. When we, we honor Him, put Him first. You know, uh, in the Living Bible, it tells us in Proverbs that in everything we do, we should put God first. Even in, in our love for Him, our finances, in our family lives, putting Him first in our lives. And so today I want to say thank you for participating and joining in and supporting the ministry, the kingdom of God. And let me pray God's blessing over you now. Father, as we give today, we thank you, Father God, that you are well able to meet every given need that comes across our lives. We thank you that you'll never forsake us or leave us and that you always provide for us. We thank you for the wonderful testimony that David had when he said, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen God's righteous begging for bread. And so we thank you today that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Hallelujah. I'm going to come and just share a word with you this morning. And I want to share on living in courage. Today, we as people, the people of God, the believers today, we need courage in our lives to stand up for what we believe today in a world moving further and further away from God, a world that that is trying to get us to compromise what we believe and put pressure on us. But we need to stand in the courage that God has given us. You know, in a scripture here, in Proverbs, it tells us this. In Proverbs 18, 14, it says this. A man's courage can sustain his broken body, but when courage goes, what hope is left? And, and what that verse of scripture is talking about that the courage that we have today, the courage that we stand for today is something that will take us moving forward in life, even though we are going through pain. Uh, bodily hurt means about pain, pain in experiencing not only in our bodies, the pains of the circumstances, the things that we are going through. You know, we all know right now that the time we're in right now, this is not a comfortable time. This is not an easy time or a nice time. It's actually a very painful time. It's a difficult time. For many of us, there, there are, are moments that we all land up struggling, trying to make sense of all the stuff that's happening in our personal lives. Maybe some of the things that are happening to you are a little bit different to the things that are happening to me, but we all are going through a difficult time right now, especially when you hear what our politicians are saying and what they expect to happen right now. We're seeing a great increase in the COVID-19 taking place in the country. But I want you to know today, even though it is a difficult time right now, we need to take courage and stand strong in what is happening around us in our lives today. All through the Bible, You'll find right in the history of the Bible, God's people always face challenges and they had such courage. You know, in the book of Joshua, Joshua 1 verses 9, 
Notice what God says to Joshua. He says this. He says, Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you wheresoever you goest. And now we see God encouraging Joshua to be strong and of good courage. And notice three times over, God encourages Joshua. In verses 6, it says, be strong and of good courage. And again, God says in verses 7, and only be strong and of very courageous. And so God knew, you know, God knew what Joshua was going to face. And God said to him, listen, you need to be strong and have courage. And, and you know, today I want you to know God knows God knows what tomorrow is bringing. God knows what you and I will be facing. And, he, and God is saying to you and I, we just need to be strong and we need to have courage. It's amazing. Even if you look at the life of Joseph, when you think about what Joseph went through, the challenges he had, the Bible tells us this in Psalms 105, 18, it says, and his soul entered into iron. And what that means is that iron entered into jo Joseph's soul. And that means that he became strong, hard, courageous. He had courage in his inner man. And I want you to know, steel entered into him. That means he was, he, he was like steel, strong, stood against all the things that came against him and the challenges he had. Let me, let me just say this. If, you know, sometimes when I read the Bible, I think about the hard times that I'm experiencing right now. And when I look at what some of these people of God went through, I realize that what I'm going through is nowhere close to what they're going through. Listen to some of the things just as I read them to you about what Joseph experienced in his life. At number one, he was left for dead in the pit by his brothers. Secondly, they sold him into slavery and the third thing happened to me. He lived in a strange country far from home. Uh, he then landed up in Potiphar's house. And then Potiphar's wife wrongly accused him of doing her wrong. And then he was thrown into prison. And then he was forgotten by his friends in prison. And then he spent years in prison. And so when we see this, all these challenges that Joseph experienced and what he went through, I want you to know he had iron, he had courage, and he stood against the challenges that come. You see, what, is, what does courage bring us? What does courage bring to our lives? Courage gives us a mindset that enables you and I as people to stand firm, strong in any encounter that we face in life, in difficulties, even in dangers, and without fear and depression of spirit. It gives us that ability to stay, stand firm. Uh, and so we need to learn to stand firm in the things that are coming against us in life. Another definition of courage means boldness. And, and it tells us in Proverbs 28 verses 1 that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I want you to know the righteous are as bold as a lion. And so I, I want to look at one person in the Bible's life of how courageous this man was. And I want us to just look at Daniel. Uh, Daniel, you know, he was known as a man of excellence. And uh, in Daniel's life, he stood uh, what he believed. He stood in his convictions and he had courage to stand against all the adverse circumstances that were put against him because he believed in God. You know, in Daniel chapter 3, it teaches us and tells us that Nebuchadnezzar, you know, the king, he made a, a golden image. And what he did is he said to everybody that they need to bow to this golden image. Let me just read out of the word what happened. It says this, they had to worship and bow down to this image that Nebuchadnezzar made. And it says, and whosoever falleth not down, and worship that shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And so what happened is Nebuchadnezzar said that everybody had to bow down and worship. And if they never ever bow down and worship, they would be cast into the fiery furnace. And, and I want you to know Daniel, he refused to bow his knee. He would not bow his knee 
to what he want, they wanted him to do. And so it's just like today, you know, the world and this world system and the circumstances and even people in our lives, they want us to bow down to them, to compromise our belief, to compromise what you and I stand for. And we mustn't allow this world to get us to compromise what we stand for and what we believe for. We need to be courageous. We need to be strong and be firm in what we believe. Even right back, if you look in the book of Exodus, you know, where God's people were held captive under Pharaoh in Egypt, you know, typology in the Bible, you know that Egypt always represents the world and Pharaoh represents uh, Satan. And, and that is just like, like Pharaoh did. He, he kept on wanting God's people to be compromised. And he wouldn't let God's people go. And then plague came after plague. And every time a plague came, Pharaoh would say, okay, I'll let you go. And then when the plague ended, he, he wouldn't let them go. And the same thing happened over and over. In Exodus 8, 28, it says this, it says in the Bible, And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, and you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away. For I entreat thee. And so what Pharaoh did is this, is that he let the people go, but he held them back and he said, you can go this far and no further so that you're not out of my sight. And you know, that is exactly how this world wants to grip you and I. That is exactly how the devil wants to take hold of your life and my life. You know, he, he gives you slack sometimes and says, no, you can feel like you can do that. And then he tries to bring you back, bring you back to a place of compromise, bring you back to where you were before. And he just wants to keep his hold on you. But you know, today, I want to say, allow courage to arise in your heart. Allow that iron that entered into Joseph, that firmness to come into you where you can say, devil, no more, no more. That's enough. And stand firm in your courage and your belief that you have in God and in Jesus Christ. It's so important that you and I do that. Courage reveals what you believe and what you stand for. We always know that we stand for God and we need to declare and we need to be strong and stand for what God is in our lives and who God is in our lives. It's so important for you and I to do that, to stand for who God is in our lives. You know, Joshua 24, 15 says, If it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which are your father served, that were on the other side of the floods, or the gods of the Amorites, those whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yet Joshua was saying, I'm declaring and I'm standing in courage that my family and I serve the Lord. You know, I believe that is a good thing for you and I right now, just to, to take a moment and declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Make that declaration today. Make your standing courage to serve God, you and your family. We have to do that today. We need courage to declare who God is. Daniel 3.15 says this, And if you be ready, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the image which have made. Well, and if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Notice Nebuchadnezzar says to Daniel, who is this God? Questioning who God is in his life. Who is this God that will deliver you in this particular time? And I want you to know that's exactly what happens in our lives at times. The circumstances and people and even the devil at time will try and get us to question God in our lives and question us who God is. You know, people would say, why is this happening? Why is that happening? And all these questions come and they question God about what is happening? And I want you to know, even Eve, if you can remember Eve in Genesis chapter 3, when, when the devil came and he said, Hath God said, questioning God. 
And, and you know, today, one of the things we need to understand as believers today, we are not here to question God. We are here to believe God. You know, in Timothy, it tells us in Timothy chapter 4, 7, but refuse and avoid irreverent legends, profane and impure and godless fictions, mere grandmother's tales uh, and silly myths and express your disapproval for them. Train yourself towards godliness, piety, keeping yourself spiritually fit. You see, we are not yet to enter into debates who God is and, and trying to prove who God is. And, and, you know, all the time, you know, I've seen in my Christian walk over all the years, you know, people want to enter into debates and they want to go into discussions and that. And, you know, it doesn't prove anything. We are to believe God. You know, in John chapter 6, verses 29, when the people said to Jesus, what is it that we believe and what are the works that we should do? Jesus said, this is the works you shall do. You shall believe in the one whom he has sent. We are yet to believe God. We're not yet to question who God is, but to believe God today. And so be strong and courageous in your belief who God is in your life. And, and you know, you'll find this. And the next point I want to bring up about why courage is so important in our lives. Because the minute you make an uncompromising stand for God, I want you to know the heat is on. It's amazing how the devil just turns up their heat like that fiery, fiery furnace that Daniel and them were placed in. I want you to know that heat came and we get tested for what we believe. The devil will always come to test what you believe and you need to be strong and courageous in these times of heat. In First Peter, it tells us this, it says, so be truly glad there is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you're going through some rough or for uh, times down here, for a while down here. Amen to that. We're going through some tough times right down here. Verse 7 says, These trials are only to test your faith, to see whether or not you're strong and pure. It is being tested like fire tests gold and purifies it. Your faith is far more precious to God than mere gold. So if your faith remains strong after being tried in the test tube of fiery trials, it brings you much praise and glory and honor on the day of his return. It talks about the fiery trials, the tests that come against us in our lives. Uh, you know, in life, I don't know if you've heard people say this, you know, when something goes wrong and they do something wrong and, and, and they get asked, why did you do it? Why did you end up doing it? They say this, well, it was just in the heat of the moment. The heat of the moment speaks about that moment of the fiery trying of your faith. It's a, a, of your belief, your courage. And so we have those fiery trials. And sometimes, many times people succumb to these fiery trials. And so we need to understand this, that we get tried on our belief. Our courage gets tried. And so we need to stay strong in our courage. And, and in Daniel chapter 3, 23 and 25, it tells us that, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace because of their stand, courage to stand for God. They were cast down into that fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished because what happened is, uh, as he rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, did not we see three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth one is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Yara talks about that as they were cast into that fiery firmness, it says that Jesus, the Son, likened unto the Son, was in the midst of them. And this is where we have to take courage and comfort and know this, that whatever you're going through, whatever trial you're going through, whatever challenge you're going through, God is with you. You know, the Bible says he'll never forsake you or leave you. And it even says in the Bible that God all causes all things to work to good for those that love him. And I want you to know that that takes great comfort for me. It gives me great courage knowing 
God is with me. He'll never leave me. He'll never sake me and he will be with me. So today we need to be strong. You know, Paul wrote this in Ephesians chapter 6, 10. He said this, God is strong and he wants you to be strong. God is strong and he wants you to be strong. And so today, I really want to encourage you to stand strong in this time that you're in. Let's have courage to face the things that come against us. Allow steel and firmness to come into your heart and into your mind. Not to, not to, to weaken or get depressed like it speaks about allowing depression to come upon you and, and slip away. Keep yourself strong. I know that we all have moments. Sometimes I have a moment of this uncertainty that's going on. But you know what? I just pull myself back and say, I'm going to stay strong and courageous in this moment. I'm not going to land up compromising my life. I'm not going to land up doing something I shouldn't do that I'll regret at a later time. I'm just going to have good courage. Be strong and courageous in life. Stand for what is right to do the right thing in our lives. And so praise God today that I speak courage over your life, that you're strong, you're courageous. Whatever you face with, you can overcome it because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. And so today we thank God for his word that we can make have courage to make right choices. And so today, if you've been listening to us, we're so honored that you have. And maybe it's the first time you've listened to our live streaming or you have before but you've never come to a place to make a decision in your life to stand for something you know in life if you don't stand for something you will fall for everything and if you've never come to the place where you've made a decision to serve God or a place where you need to understand who God is then I want to give you this moment today for you to turn to him today to come to him. He'll always come to you. He's, the Bible tells us uh, he, he knocks on the door of your heart. So if you would open your heart and allow him in, he will come in to your life. Right now, make that decision to come to Christ today and pray this prayer with me if you've decided to do that today. Just pray together with me. Let's pray. Say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I thank you that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I ask you to come into my life and help me today to turn my life around. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for uh, listening in. We pray that you're going to have a great week and always remembering that you're the head, not the tail. You're above and not beneath and whatever you put your hands to will prosper. We love you and appreciating, assuring you all the time that Laura and myself, we are praying for you. Hallelujah. We're going to get stronger through this thing. We're going to come out gloriously and God is on our side. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week. Amen.